This U.S. weapon will arrive in Ukraine soon, according to a U.S. defense official. It's the ground-launched small-diameter bomb, a 250-pound class weapon capable of reaching targets over 90 miles away. The GLSTB is so accurate that it can strike its target within one meter. But unlike other long-range missile systems, like the Atakums, the ground-launched small-diameter bomb comes at a considerably lower price. Think of uh, GLSTB as kind of in the middle of the Goldilocks missile that gives, for in this case, the Ukrainians greater reach and greater standoff, but with uh, a much lower cost and greater numbers. Here's why the ground-launched small-diameter bomb gets a lot of bang for its buck. The ground-launched small-diameter bomb is a new precision-guided weapon that attaches to an M26 rocket. The U.S. has had an air-launched version, but it had to test the ground-launched version before sending it to Ukraine. This particular munition is a bit of an innovation. It takes uh, something that the United States has thousands uh, lying around, and that's a small-diameter bomb, and essentially straps a, a rocket motor to the back of it, and then fires it out of uh, some of our most standard uh, rocket uh, launchers that we have uh, for the United States and for our allies. The bomb has a range of about 94 miles and can be fired from multiple types of launchers, like the M270 MLRS and the HIMARS, which have already been supplied by the U.S. to Ukraine. And this flexibility means that those who use it can be deceptive with their enemy. So the Russians wouldn't necessarily know if that uh, HIMARS launcher has Gimlers, has uh, GLSDBs or if it had ATACMs. And frankly, you could have mixing and matching of those things. And we want to use that uncertainty to the benefit uh, of the Ukrainians. The bombs are unpowered, but are equipped with wings, which allow them to glide to their targets. The glide feature allows you to come in from a non-predictable angle. You can shoot off axis and then come in from the side or from behind. And so if you're the Russians, uh, and you have your air defenses pointed in one particular sector, one direction, you might not be looking uh, in every direction uh, all at once. So you take that uh, ability to glide to a target, and then you attach that rocket engine to the back, and all of a sudden you've got range and you've got a little bit more speed. You don't have to fly uh, that aircraft with a pilot that much closer to, to the target. The GLSDB flies slower than the Atakums and other ballistic missiles, which makes it more likely to be spotted by adversaries, but also allows it to be more precise. So you're trading some speed to get greater range and to get greater accuracy and to get the different flexibility for how you approach the target. The glide bomb has both the ability to maneuver and advanced guidance. This combination gives it the ability to hit more difficult to reach targets like inside caves. It is a precision-guided munition, uh, which means it can uh, maneuver in the end game to get exactly, or pretty close to exactly, uh, where you want it to be. Uh, it can come in and kind of curve around and come in from behind. And so you can come from all kinds of different trajectories, as well as different attack angles. It just opens the possibility to get things that terrain or urban areas uh, might otherwise be really hard to get at with uh, something ballistic, such as artillery. At 250 pounds, the GLSDB warhead is smaller than the 500-pound Atakums warhead, but it can effectively reach most of the same targets. So it's not as big as an Atakums, but it's still pretty sizable. And in principle, the, the sort of targets that you could use here are as, uh, as diverse as anything you would otherwise use a small diameter bomb for. Uh, it could be softer targets. It could be things sitting on an airfield. Uh, it could be, uh, you know, penetrating into a hardened Bunker. The GLSDB also has a number of fusing options, which allow the operator to select how and when the bomb will detonate. You can tell a, uh, an SDB to explode you know, at some uh, particular designated height of altitude. Uh, you can tell it to explode instantly when it hits something. You can tell it to penetrate a little while and then to explode. Those are useful for different kinds of targets, and so you have all those different uh, options as well. While the exact price of GLSDBs is unknown, they cost far less than other long-range missile systems like the Atakums. The Ukrainians are shooting six, seven, eight thousand uh, artillery rounds a day, so the unit cost of these things does matter. Uh, it also uh, affects how much the United States or other folks can afford to purchase for the Ukrainians. An abundance of affordable munitions allows for what's known as structured attacks. Perhaps you might want to have multiple GLSTBs coming in all at the same time and from different directions. And that's really going to complicate and to hopefully overwhelm uh, your target. Perhaps you might launch your slower weapons first. They start coming in from different angles and then you time your faster moving ballistic 
uh, Gimler's Ray attack comes to come in and everything kind of arrives at the same time. Uh, the prospect of having structured attacks that can really confuse and overwhelm uh, a defender uh, begins to get uh, pretty, pretty interesting. The GLSCB won't be Ukraine's most powerful or longest range weapon, but it will add significant flexibility for attack operations as well as capacity. The wings really give you the flexibility to have that aerodynamic uh, maneuverability from whichever direction, whichever axis you want to come in from. You may be able to launch them this way and this way, uh, and then they begin to glide and, and come back from behind all different directions. The GLSDB could be a powerful tool to slow down Moscow's continued assaults on Ukraine. And its lower cost and existing stockpile means Ukraine could get more of them, although it's unclear how many GLSDBs the U.S. will deliver. We're taking stuff that's lying around in inventory and putting it together in an innovative way. Excess uh, surplus uh, bombs and marrying them with rockets that we have lying around. Now, we we'll probably will need to produce more of the, of the rockets, uh, to be sure, but we, the good news is we, we have a lot of these SDBs. And while the stockpile will eventually run out... It's not about looking for the perfect solution here, it's looking for the good enough solution, it's for, looking for the solution that keeps the Ukrainians uh, away from defeat uh, and pushes the, the Russians back, and so it's really putting a particular munition within this much larger picture uh, so that uh, Ukraine can repel the invader.